Good morning and welcome to the University of Westminster. Today, we welcome you to the West University. We discuss the core philosophies of the MSc in Sport and Exercise Nutrition. We ask, who the hell is Mike Newell anyway? Finally, we give you a sneak preview of some of the innovations for 2019. Guys, stay tuned to find out more about the course. Guys, welcome to the University of Westminster, as I've said. So, um, first of all, uh, my name is Dr. Mike Newell. I am the course leader for the MSc uh, that you guys are going to be undertaking either over the next year or over the next two years if you're taking the part-time attendance modality. Um, first, uh, my apologies that I cannot be physically present with you today. Uh, I had some prior commitments uh, with my family. Uh, which meant that I wasn't able to come down today. But you're in the very capable hands of Dr. Claire Robertson, of Dr. Sanjoy Deb, and Dr. Jane Nafahu, who are going to help see you through these kind of challenging first few days at the university to make sure that you are on top of everything that you need to do, enrollment, getting to your first session, knowing where you can find information, all those types of things. They're going to talk to you in a lot of detail today um, to make sure that you leave the session knowing exactly what it is that you need to do ahead of your first teaching day. I, my job today is simply to say hello to you, um, let you know who we are, who I am, what I think about the course, how, what's the course philosophy, those types of things, so that we can all hit the ground uh, running, which is the, the 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 most important thing to try and get across to you guys. Now, you might be thinking, what, well, why, what's going on, what's going on here? So, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about SendStream. This is the SendStream format that I use. Uh, it's a, a weekly live stream that we use within the course, but I'll talk more about that as we move through. But I've just got a few slides that I want to go through with you um, as we speak. So again, welcome to Westminster. You're currently in the New Cavendish building. Uh, so you're on the New Cavendish Street. 115 New Cavendish is the building that you're in. And I'm pleased to tell you that despite the fact that we have five sites across the university, you will only ever be taught in this building. So if you're ever struggling to think where it is that you need to go, it's always this building that you will be in, unless you are informed otherwise. But I can't remember, as of the last two years that I've been running the program, that a session's really been conducted out with of uh, this building. This year's the first year that we've had orientation over at Marlborough. At least you had the opportunity to go across there and take a look at the campuses there. We also have a campus at Regent Street. We have another campus over at Harrow, Little Titchfield Street, and the Well Street um, building as well. But you will only ever be based in 115. So. Make sure you get familiarized with the building before you leave today. Make sure you find out where the library is. Um, I think Sanjoy uh, mentioned that he might be taking you up to the labs uh, towards the end of the session today. And do take the opportunity to see what facilities we've got so that you can kind of get a bit of a taste uh, for what you're going to be exposed to over uh, the coming months and years in, in that case for most of you. So my philosophy for the course has always been this. It's always been that we're we're informed by practice and we're inspired by research. And it kind of touches on that kind of really fundamental element of sport and exercise nutrition. And that is that ultimately, the practices that we talk about, the interventions that you're gonna learn about and the, uh, the different public health policies, if you like, ultimately need to get to people. We're dealing with human nutrition. We're dealing with the nutrition of people and what they actually uh, consume on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just that we've focused in on a narrow subject, a narrow subtopic of sport and exercise nutrition. So looking at how we can facilitate athletes uh, and those who are more physically active um, or getting people to be more physically active and how we can support them uh, from a nutritional perspective. But also we always, always make sure that we have an eye on the research. That's what we're all about. We're in we're um research led practice in some ways. Um so we're inspired by the research. We're very aware of the research. Um and that's a key element of the uh, the MSc program that you're going to be taking over the year 
is that we will always be referring back to the literature, back to the research that's been conducted on any given topic. Now, one of the key things with an MSc program and how it differentiates you from your undergraduate programs or any prior training that you might have done before this is that we start to challenge the literature that's out there. We start to kind of really critically evaluate what evidence there is out there uh, with regards to different ergogenic aids, with different interventions that we might um, undertake with different populations, and really question whether that is the best intervention that an individual might want to take, or is that the best approach that a group of indi individuals who are undertaking a particular sport might take? So that if you ever think, if you ever th feel that you're a little bit lost in the course at some times, always think about the fact that we're informed by practice and we're therefore inspired by the research um, that is undertaken within our field. Now, I just thought I'd take the, a little bit of an opportunity to give you a little bit of background for who I am. And most of the other guys who will be in there will be telling you lots about themselves. I thought I'd do the same and just give you a little bit of background as to where your course leader has come from. <clears throat> so way back when, uh, as a youth, as it were, uh, I used to do quite a bit of swimming. Um, I was half decent at one point, which is uh, was good. I'm now unfortunately a largely uh fat lecturer unfortunately and uh, but yeah that's where my interest in sport and exercise science as a whole came from i did a lot of swimming uh as a as a junior i was a distance freestyle swimmer uh did quite a few hours in the pool uh each week and that's kind of spurred me on to kind of follow this route in um performance sport I attended the University of uh Stirling in Scotland um and I was lucky enough also then to do uh, a little almost six months gap year if you like or six months half year if you were uh, where I did part of my undergraduate um program at the University of Sydney and you can see here in this picture uh, I'm actually on a bike uh, in a heat chamber it's 40 degrees celsius 50 percent humidity and I was essentially asked to try and ride uh this cyclergometer for as long as I possibly could in those circumstances. And we did a, uh, they also did a follow-up trial as well while I did that in normal temperatures, so about 20 degrees C. And it was probably the most horrific uh, research project that I've ever done. It was certainly uh, very, very challenging and very, very hard. And again, it was kind of, um, I felt at the time that I'd, I'd better understand the physiological processes that were going on within my own body and the, and the way that I adapted to uh, specific training bouts. Um, by actually undertaking some of these research projects myself as a volunteer and i've I've done quite a few research projects uh over the last 10 15 years or so where i've been a research participant and usually my motivations for doing that is to try and better understand my own physiological responses and um, by having a really kind of pragmatic hand in on what research is being done and how the researchers undertake those research projects and that kind of really inspired me to then kind of go on and do my uh, phd I, also, I stayed on at the University of Stirling um, and I worked with Dr. Stuart Galloway, who is the chair of the board of the Senna Register, the Sport and Exercise Nutrition Register, which is hosted by the British Dietetic Association. And you can see here that uh, I'm trying to pretend like I know what I'm doing by holding a clipboard. Um, but I, I got uh, a bunch of cyclists in, about 20 of them. And we really tried to characterize the dose response relationship between carbohydrate ingestion and subsequent performance. And we took a a neuromuscular approach to that we took a physiological uh, metabolic type response to that and we took a performance response to that as well trying to get that entire holistic approach to how these particular cyclists uh, were responding to uh, the exercise intervention that we gave them but also the nutritional strategy that we gave them which one of the nutritional strategies actually resulted in a better performance um I got a couple of papers out of this uh, of that PhD, and I took a slight different direction in my uh, career from that point onwards. I, I actually then moved down from Scotland to Cambridge, um, and I went to work as a research manager at the Medical Research Council. Um, the The unit no longer exists, uh, which is a large, which was a large driver for why I came to Westminster in the first place, actually. But during my time here, I, I actually. Um, coordinated research projects for other researchers so there was about five research groups based in the unit that i was placed at and essentially if any researchers wanted to use human participants for their research projects which obviously tend to stem around nutrition they would come and speak with me and we talk about the governance ethics the uh the logistics um of how to actually go about running that particular research project and i did some of this stuff whilst i was in cambridge as well but i'm not gonna uh, bore you with the finer details of that 
At the end of that two year period, I then came to University of Westminster. Um, I'm now a lecturer in sport and exercise nutrition and the course leader for the MSc. Uh, I've been here for three years now. I've just started my fourth year. I started in September, so it's always nice that the new academic year comes around. I kind of sit back and go, gosh, I've been at Westminster for three years. Crazy. Uh, and hopefully I've been contributing positively to uh, the University of Westminster since I've been here. But I just thought it gives you a little bit of a whistle-stop tour as to the fact that way back when uh, I was a student, I did some postgrad stuff, and um, ultimately uh, I've kind of made my way through uh, my career in a very progressive way. Um, and it's always good for you guys to kind of see, well, where where is the people that are actually teaching you on the course come from? What's in their background and how did they get where they are? And that's something that we're going to help to try and make sure we focus the course in on is making sure that you have a very clear idea of what it is that you want to go on to do uh, once the MSc program is coming to a closure. So we've got all of our uh, last year's cohort of students. They've uh, they submitted their dissertation projects at the start of August staff are currently going through the process of marking those and confirming marks and such like but ultimately we're trying to provide a vehicle for them to actually ensure that they get to where they want to go whether that's further education in terms of phd positions whether that's uh looking at their own private practice uh, whether that's getting involved with other uh, private practices and commercial practices or whether that's fulfilling a particular career uh destination that is specific to them we're here to try and help ensure that that happens so I thought I'd take a sneaky opportunity as well. Uh, Claire and Sanjoy and Jane are going to talk to you about some of the other innovations well on the course, but I some two things that I just want to touch on before we carry on and I say uh, goodbye and hand you over. SendStream is, uh, the this is SendStream, this is what you see here. We do a live stream uh, every Thursday or Friday, depending on which semester it is. I'll probably get some insight from you guys as to what day would be preferable. Um, but essentially, uh, every week we do a live stream of around about 30 minutes to one hour to make sure that you guys know exactly what it is that you need to do. So when you get onto the Blackboard site and you see the tab that says SendStream, you can look at all the previous videos that we've done to try and get a bit of a feel for what SendStream is and how you guys can get involved. I strongly recommend that we you, you take the opportunity to watch next week's episode because that will be before any of the teaching starts. We're going to break down every single module and we're going to go what's going to happen in your first week at the University of Westminster to make sure that you know where you need to be, you know who's going to be teaching you, you know what pre-reading that you need to do so that you know exactly where it is you need to be, what you need to have done by the time that you get there and what it is that you're likely to get out of that first week because transitioning into you know new university new environment new places is very tricky and we try and make sure that we are as set up for that as uh, as best as possible now claire is going to talk and touch on some other things that we're going to do but the other thing i want to mention is the elite athlete program which is new for 2019 now the students union decided to take the opportunity to try and encourage those who have sporting talent um to try and support them more holistically from a university perspective so They've now developed the Elite Athlete Program. Now, I've been, me uh, and Sanjoy have been quite keen to be involved with this particular program. But ensuring that you guys, as MSc students with Sport and Exercise Nutrition Specialism, have the opportunity to be involved in that Elite Athlete Program, whereby it becomes students supporting the students. Um, now, this has never been run before, so I can't be too specific as exactly how it's going to run. But ultimately, um, you will have the opportunity to apply to be part of this, this additional elite athlete program from a support perspective. Um, so you will be allocated specific athletes of which you will then go through um, various different physiological assessments, nutritional assessments in order to ensure that the athlete feels more informed and they've got a direction, they've got additional support. Now you won't just be thrown into the deep end, you will be associated to either myself, Sandra, or likely Jane as well. Uh, to be part of this program but just something to be aware of keep your eye open for it and it's something that we'll definitely be talking more about in the future so just to finish off i've been talking for quite a while now but just to finish off just remember that we're always informed by practice and we are inspired by research and um, do take that as your mantra moving forward uh, it's certainly one that i try and hold dear to the course and hold it close to keep us all focused and moving forward in the background you can see just behind my head here that we've got this is the SendStream locker room. Now I'm going to talk more about the SendStream locker room once we get the first episode of SendStream. It's just that this format works quite nicely for doing uh, absent lectures as it were. But you can see here all the names of our 2018-2019 uh, students on the, on the walls of the locker room. 
they've contributed con- considerably to the course over the last uh, t- 12 months. And ultimately, when we get to the first episode of uh, SendStream for the 2019-2020 period, check out the board because your name's going to be up there. So um, just to say, I'm really looking forward to seeing and meeting you all properly uh, and getting stuck into the course as we move forward. That is all from me. Uh, we don't need to talk about this stuff just now. <clears throat> As I'm going to now pass you on to the capable hands of Claire, Sanjoy and Jane. Um, you will definitely be seeing me over the coming weeks. Uh, I'll be popping into sessions just to check everything's okay. Please do not hesitate to contact me as well. Once you get onto the Blackboard site, you'll see the staff page. On that staff page, you will see links to all of the staff members. Just send me an email if there's any problems that you are facing throughout the course. But other than that, really nice to have you all on board on the course. And I really look forward to working with you all over the next uh, 12 months. Take it easy, enjoy the rest of the day, and I will speak to you all very soon.